cracking everybody new video um i'll tell you what i don't know if um youtube just has me working quadruple time or if if mark over at soft white underbelly is uh copywriting all of his videos now but this is another day of me doing a video i did a, i recorded a johnny video earlier and um they didn't allow it so it's under review but here we go with the new one the homie ray ray little ray ray sent me this told me to check this guy out this guy is his name is adrian so let's let's see what adrian's uh got going on and i just got kicked out about Did he tattoo a bow tie on his neck? <laughs> uh oh. Two or three weeks ago. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I got kicked out. Uh, uh, some guy stole, uh, stole my shoes. And I, uh, I met him at the gate and I told him, hey, uh, you saw my shit? He said, he. He said, yeah, I took your shit, so what? So I lighted him. I just got in a fight with him, you know what I mean? Lighting him means... Yeah, going you know, off on him. Yeah, I ran up on him and I just took off on him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, got, I got in a fight. Yeah. Basically, you know? Yeah. How did he have... How did he, how did, how did he get his shoes, though? Um, we need more details, Adrian, because... Um, I'm not trying to like be mean, but you don't look like a person that has um, very many pairs of shoes. So, <laughs> so Adrian, uh, where, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I grew up in Southgate, California. Southgate. And uh, tell me about Southgate. your childhood growing up. You had both your parents. Well, I'm, uh, in the beginning, it was a fairly normal home. Well, I thought it was, you know, until uh, check out that bow tie, though. Isn't it upside down? It's upside down, right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was always a curious child. You know, I was curiosity. I always, my mom said when I was little, uh, things like, like your devices or like stereos, I, was, I would put my finger and without no screwdriver or nothing, I would, I would take out the screws. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, wait. That was an awesome story, bro. It was. Uh, this. Is he using his pants as his ashtray? What the? Adrian, tighten up. Big dog, you're on camera. Mark has 4 million subscribers. Come on, homie. S straighten up your tie, too. We're at it. <laughs> but just a finger. My finger in my, in my, in my nail. Oh, my God. Just to my mom, my, as, a, as, a, as a little kid, you know, as a little one-year-old, two-year-old kid. Curious. Yeah, I was real curious. And uh, I didn't really know, I, but I didn't really know about drugs, nothing until probably maybe when uh, I started finding out about drugs when I started seeing my dad. My dad snort coke off of the restroom uh, 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 counter, you know, the sink. You have these lines. Just seem snort them, and I would hear the. And I was curious just to know what that noise was, so I would go around the the house, go to the window. There was a window. I would climb a ladder, and look and look in, and I see him. How, how old were you? I was. I had to be like five, six years old, boss. Five, six years old. I get he was curious, right? But uh, where'd the ladder come from? <laughs> How many five or six year olds are, are, are strong enough to carry a damn ladder to look through the window and see what's going on? And you know what? Come to think of it, I don't have a ladder. Why you have la Why you got a ladder? Are you are you painting the house? I'm curious. You're curious. I'm curious too. Uh, I was probably younger than that. I wasn't even in school yet. Probably like four or five. He's a strong ass baby. The world's strongest baby right there. He went and got a, a ladder from um, down the street 
they, were, they had a fucking um they had one of those places home in like a home improvement place um and so he would just grab it real quick and then run back like that carrying the ladder and then um watch his dad do light <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Four or five years old. <laughs> yeah. And, well, then um, I got introduced into drugs at nine years old. My dad, my, my brother, uh, my dad had a, a, a different uh, uh, marriage before she he got with my mom. And uh, he had three other uh, kids. He had a, a, a boy and two other daughters, my brother Mario, my sister Brenda, and then my sister Denise. Then they separated. My, my dad met my mom, which was way younger than, than his uh, first wife. Uh -oh. His first wife was older than him wow. by like 15, 10 years. And uh, so there was a time when my oldest brother, I don't consider them have to be half brothers, do you think he? Do you think he's gonna make a noise when that when that cherry touches his fingernail right now, or is he not gonna make a noise? I hope Mark left it in because it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen because he looks like he's smoking some Lemax, some Camel non filters. So we're about to see some burnage. Oh damn! Testing one two one two. My bad. You know, because we still got the same uh, same blood running through our veins. You know, I consider him to be a uh, uh, brother. You know, my brother. So my brother was messing up at the time, and uh, his mom talked to my dad and asked him if he could come live with us. So he came, live, live, he came and stayed with us for a while, and that's when I first got introduced to drugs. I was about nine years old. Which one? Excuse me? Which drug? Methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. Meth, crystal. At what age? Nine. At nine years old. At nine years old. And, uh, what, is it, what does a nine-year-old on meth look like? A nine-year-old on meth? I took the hit, I took a blast out that pookie. <laughs> and bam, I shot up in the air like, 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 like a firework. Like a firework, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> For real, like I took a blast and boom, I was gone. And, uh, I'm stuck on the cigarette. I kept on tripping because I knew my mom was going to be looking for me. You know what I mean? So my whole trip... He's holding it backwards at this point. Is he going to put it in his mouth that way? <laughs> the, way the way Johnny was saying he by accident did that? It was, oh, my mom's coming looking for me. I got to I gotta get high, go hide somewhere, you know? Get right, away from my mom, my mom. And uh, but my mom, my mom, you know how moms are. Mom... She knew. Mom, yeah, moms know, <laughs> you know? Moms, moms, they... they they gave birth to you, you know? So they, 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 know, they know their kids, uh, and they know, they know where their, their kids go. They, they, they know hey, you could tell this dude's actually a cool dude. He's just like, you know, they just tell the, the stories funny. I'm sure I tell my stories funny. Somebody could do reaction videos on mine. But um, Adrian's like all over the place, huh? I honestly was waiting to see him burn himself, but he's, he's, he's still there. I know everything about you. And my mom knew exactly where to go to find me. She went and found me and she said, what are you doing? Hey, what, what, what was right away? She's like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I said, oh, no, 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 nothing. Bam. And took off again like a firework back to the house. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't really get in trouble that day. Uh, but they knew I was on, that something was wrong. Did it continue? It continued. My brother uh, was at the house a little bit longer, and um, he uh, started getting introduced into weed after the meth. So the first time I hit the, the meth, he started him. He started him off way up here, and then was like, "All right, your little ass went a little bit crazy. Let me mellow you out. Let's see how that hit him." Bam! It stopped for a little bit, right? But I got introduced, he was, that's when uh, the Cypress Hill, yeah, that was in the Cypress Hill era, when the uh, the Dr. Green Thumb era and all that. You know what I mean? Uh, so weed was real popular in the 90s, like the early 90s. I mean, weed's always been popular, right? Since the 60s, since the hippie days, but it was illegal. 
It's always been it's been legal until now and day. Now and today's modern day. Got all type of things going legal, you know what I mean? But the boy, yeah. hey, he's been to the joint. He's been to the joint because he is sniping. This is this is now he's sniping with this one. He's got that thing down. See, dudes like that in the joint, when they get their tobacco and they smoke it all the way down like that, they look like they've been eating Cheetos. Cause right here would be like orangish yellow. Look at him. This is a professional. You guys are watching a cigarette smoker on a whole nother level. <laughs> uh, I started, I got introduced into weed. Come on, uh, oh, uh, he put it out, man. Uh, uh, uh. The first. Uh... Let's pour some water on those, eh? Those mother, those need lotion. Those need crema. Ching, gao. Those things need one of them body moisture, cocoa butter stick. This fool must have walked through the desert to get to this interview. Uh, uh, nickel sack that got sold to me was from a Cypress Hill member. Like, like I said, I grew up in Southgate, California. Cypress Hill is from Southgate. You know what I mean? Uh, my brother went to school with all of them, so that's how he knew them. So my first, my first uh, nickel bag of weed was uh, was sold to me by by a, a trigger from Cypress Hill, which later on got kicked out of Cypress Hill due to the fact that uh, he started dabbling with uh, narcotics. Oh, he's so Cypress Hill had a, didn't the Beatles have a, me a member that was like there for one song and then they got rid of him, but he's like the secret Beatle. Orale, this guy bought weed from the secret Cypress Hill guy. <laughs> Which weren't uh, weren't uh, um, THC marijuana, what they were used to doing. You know what I mean, so they ain't like that, and they kicked them out. You know, but yeah, he 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 sold it. Trigger sold me my my, my first. Uh, his real name was Edgar. Oh my God! Edgar, Come on, I, don't know, I, Wait, I, I forgot his last name. Yeah, thank God. His real name was Edgar. Oh, Chinga, Trigger Edgar. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad you forgot his name. Strain your tie. But he was a uh, part of the Cypress Hill clan, you know. Uh, finish school? Did I finish school? I, I actually, I'm not. Uh, I never really went to school. My whole teenage years were involved in me being in in uh, in in, in um, jail. Why? Youth Authority. At 13, I was in. Uh, I was in jail for. Uh, went to jail for murder. And uh, that changed my life. When did you get the tattoo of the bow tie? That's what we needed to know. You know, changed my life completely. How does a 13 year old get convicted of murder? Uh, a 13 year old gets convicted of murder because uh, uh, a 13 year old had already been banging for two years. I started getting banging at 11 years old. You know what I mean? So uh, a 13 year old got convicted of murder because a 25-year-old started shooting at a 13-year-old. The 13-year-old wasn't having it and shot him. You, shot killed, him you, killed, you killed the guy at 13? At 13 years old. Wow. How has that, that affected your life? It changed my life completely. I want him to say his nickname. I want to see if that's somebody that was in YA with me. Hopefully he says his nickname. Yo. It introduced me to a whole new world that I wasn't aware of. Yes. Um, Do, does it affect you still today? How old are you now? I'm 31 now. Does I'll it, be 32 in a couple months. Does that affect you still? What? He definitely wasn't in YA with me, but he's talking about the 90s and he's only 31. When is this video recorded? <laughs> this ain't adding up. I don't know. At days, yes. That's why I'm in this position that I'm in. I think I try to numb everything that I, you know what I mean? Yeah. You go to bed at night, you put your head on a pillow, and you think about that? I think about it every day. Yeah. Every mm. day of my life. Be hard not to. Yeah. Every day of my life, I think about it. You know, as the day goes by, you have these thoughts coming to your head. It's not about whether the guy was asking for it or not, it's about what happened. Yes, exactly. 
And uh, basically, I grew up either get or get got, you know? Either kill or get killed. I mean, and it wasn't gonna be me getting killed. I mean? Yeah. So how much prison time have you done? I've done three, three prison terms. After I got out of youth authority, I was, I, when I got out of youth authority, I was uh, 18, going to 19. I was about to be 19 years old. Got out, I uh, met this girl. I met this girl in Hunt, and, uh, and uh, she got introduced to me by my ex-girlfriend, which later become, became the uh, mother of my, of my son. I have a 10-year-old and a 16-year-old. But before I went to YA, I had already, uh, I had already implanted my seed in a girl. Wow. Which means wow, he got biblical. That's like the way they say it in the Bible, no? <laughs> he implanted. <laughs> it's either the Bible or, or the, the almanac, the, the farmer's almanac. One of the two says it that way. I had already, uh, I had already implanted my seed in a girl. Which means uh, oh, wait, I had already got a girl pregnant. Thank you, you for know? clarifying, big dog. So before I went to youth authority, I got I was privileged to see my daughter be born. You know. Yeah, and uh, but right in the like right after, I ended up getting locked up for for, for that charge and I ended up getting busted and I came out. Um. I thought I, I thought I was a uh, Superman of gangsters. Those of you that are, that are here from my other channel, you guys know I say that we get out of YA and we we just know without a doubt we're the baddest dudes that ever lived. But every one of us thinks that. That's the cold thing. I mean, hey, no, no, nobody could tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, nobody, nobody's gonna be able to kill me. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I was bulletproof. You know what I mean, that's, and that's what a youth authority does to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it puts you in a mentality where uh, you just think that you're unstoppable, boss. You know? So uh, I got I get out when I'm 18. I start, I start dabbling with drugs. I'm not doing too heavy drugs, I'm just, Dabbling with weed, meth. Mm. Dabbling with me, weed, meth. And obviously, he does not dabble with an iron, right? <sighs> I'm sorry, I had to say that because I, you know, the 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 part in the middle here, here, this is like whatever, eh? you know. We're not we're overlooking the ash because he has ash down here that, that it matches. Eh? His shirt matches his pants at this point. But what the hell? Is this right here? What? <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, anything I could get my hands on, I was doing. You know? Yeah. And uh, so, um, yeah, so uh, I get out, I'm um, chilling, and um, Taking on my homeboys, running the muck, out there doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing as well. You know, I, I won't say it on on camera, but good, good it's stuff. part of the lifestyle, basically, the gangbanging lifestyle. You know, and and our lifestyle, you gotta uh, it's called putting in work. You gotta put in work. You know, and you don't need to confess that anything here. You've done enough time already. You know, but yeah, basically, you have to shoot people. You get what I'm saying? To uh, Adrian, to be able we just to, uh, said we we're not gonna uh, talk uh, about it. <laughs> uh, not appreciated by your peers, but uh, accepted. You know what I mean? Are you shooting innocent people or shooting mm. rival gang? No, 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 no. Ne never, never, never have I shot innocent any, anybody that was innocent. Holy never. shit! Holy shit! Is his hand dead? Tell me that doesn't look like it's like from a corpse. Like it, it like at least, at least from the second knuckle down. They've been sitting in water for a while. The rest of him was dry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Damn, Adrian. Is that, like... 
What makes you do that? Again, I could tell this is a cool ass dude. He just, uh, damn, like, you know, these people that come on soft white underbelly, they have they have a lot of trauma they're dealing with. We all do the only, you know, like I tell people, everybody has a sad story. Some are just sadder than others. Um, and it's unfortunate that people um, try to compensate for that with drugs, man. My my addiction was was criminality. You know, I was trying to overcompensate in the streets or being a fool, you know, whenever I could. Uh, I thank God that I didn't get caught up in any addiction, man, because I want I want my hands to look alive, not like <laughs> not not me personally. No, but the gangbang era, there was but yes, they, they were shooting just people on the street. Yeah, shooting people that like, were gangbanging, you know, gangbanging, you know, or we would go and rob rob a uh, uh, connects that were selling big amounts of drugs, you know, and infesting the neighborhoods with drugs. And things of that sort, you know, and that nature, you know, they, making it somewhat justifiable. S S some way is a perfect word for it, you know. Some. I like this guy because at the end of the day, is is wrong. Right. It's not right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Right. Yeah. It's not. It's not right. It's it's wrong. You know what I mean, and uh, later down later down the line, as I matured I found these things out you know but at the time uh, I was a reckless kid I ain't I ain't think nothing of it you know my bad <laughs> what the hell? he just takes off man. Eh? he's got he, he's 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 a humble dude you can tell but damn uh, let's see that again eh? <laughs> later down the line as I matured I found these things out you know but at the time, uh, I was a reckless kid. I ain't, I ain't think nothing of it, you know? My bad. <laughs> I, I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, what I had to do, you know? You want to put the water bottle down? It's, it's yeah, yeah. It's noises. Damn, Mark, let that man, he's telling you his life story. Hey. Let him hold that water. See? Sorry about that. No problem. That's it a is, humble dude right there. Easy to fix. I like this guy, man. He's humble. Thank you. I apologize for that. Um... So the prison oh, time no. gave you time don't to think do about it. all this and don't do the whole body thing, man. Reconsider. Yeah, exactly. A mature, a pre, pre, all, all prison did for me. Oh, and he's got his neighborhood right here in the time. And I let. Okay, I see you. Uh, which was in a positive manner, which I believe was mature me. You know. Take me from my uh, from being a teenager and the adolescent to being a grown man. You know, that's how prison gotcha. did for me. Other than that, it, 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 I believe prison just makes you worse. You know, because you come out back into the community and you just it's a uh, like a trophy. Like oh, you get you get a uh, my things. Mark, we're doing yeah. sign language. Yeah, it's like a trophy, you know? You're proud of your prison time. Excuse me? You're proud of your prison time. At the time. At the time, yes, I was. It's a badge of honor. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a badge of honor. Exactly. It's a trophy, you know? But now that... Uh, the homie rode a bike, huh? He rode his bike there. <laughs> Oh, but I look man. back on it now that now <clears throat> I realize, man, I wish I would have gone a different route. So he has that hybrid pair of pants. Uh, one side is golfing and the other side is sailing. The sailor pants. Oh, no. Oh, no. He has two different shoes on. That, that's a Nike. That's a Nike off. That is not Nike right there. <laughs> Marketing right, man. <clears throat> that's why he got the pant leg. He, see, he put the pant leg. He put the golf side up. 
Because he's like, check out my Nikes. And then the other side, he's like, look at my other shoe. <laughs> you know? What is that? Did you have any role models? As a is, kid? It, is it? Like your dad? Hold on, eh? I, am I wrong? Am I, the, the soul is what's throwing me off that they're not the same. Okay, let's see. I realize, man, I wish I would have gone a different route. The whole pattern looks similar. But the soul doesn't. I hope they're the same shoes, Big Dog. You know? Uh, Did you have any role models as a kid? Like your dad was? Well, my dad, my dad really, he, he used to beat me up and you know, my uh, uh, DCFS got into the picture and stuff like that, you know, uh, uh, basically social services. And my dad got it out of my life when I was about 10 years old, 10. Yeah, he, he, 10 years old, he was out of my life. Did you have any positive role models in your life? My homies, your homie. mm -hmm. my own boys, my friends, my brother, you know? Now, which, were, which weren't positive. Right. Were, they were <laughs> negative role models. <laughs> I saw, no, I didn't have no yeah, positive so that's, role that's, models. That's what I'm starting to learn is a huge, huge problem. Yes, I ain't, ha I ain't have no positive role models. Do smart. You know what I mean? But then again, we don't know these things at the time. You it's know? not your fault. We don't know. We we don't know these things at the time. We just and it's not their fault either. You know, yeah, they they just they grew up probably the same way. You know, they don't know. They don't know they're they're influencing anybody at the time. You know, it's not something that somebody thinks about. Not well. Not in in my way of living. So he has an understanding of the negative impacts in his life, but um, we're gonna go a little bit longer. We've already done 16 minutes with my damn gibberish that's probably almost 26 27 minutes uh let's see let's see a little bit more and the way i grew up you know people don't sit down and actually think about these things because there are everybody's out there high as fuck you know like uh high, excuse my language uh everybody's out there high high drunk whatnot you know like different things you know so so today you're you're where? You're living on the street? I'm living on the street right now. Mm. In Skid Row? Yeah, on Skid Row. How long you been here? This time I've been here about a week or two. Mm. But I've lived here before. Yeah. yeah, I lived here before. I was out here with my uncle. Mm. My uncle rest in peace and we used to stay right here off town in between sixth and seventh, right right in front of the fire hydrant. Mm. We stayed right there for uh, about a Good year. My uncle ended up passing away though. He uh heroin addict as well. He ended up uh, getting an abscess on his hand, which blew up like a Mickey Mouse hand. Blew up like a Mickey Mouse hand and uh kept on saying people kept on saying I'm uh, I was in jail at the time. People kept on saying I'm uh to get to get to go to the doctor that he's gonna he's, is gonna be this poisonous, you know? Gonna That's crazy. I think that we'll go ahead and end this one here. Um, I got 18 minutes in on this, and who knows what the total is. And I know you guys got things to do. I appreciate you guys for watching the videos. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to put something out today because if not, that'll be two days I haven't put anything out really. Oh no, I think I did yesterday, it was just not monetized. But, anyways, uh, everybody, please be safe. Be smart and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.